So I received some questions on this type of problem and um, from chapter nine, and I thought I would go over it in a video to help you guys out. So what they want you to do is compute the critical value Z alpha over two that corresponds to an 81% level of confidence. Now, hold on, let me, let me bring up a picture here. Okay, so you're basically talking about a picture like this where, excuse me, doo -doo, just trying to bring that up. Okay, so the middle is 80%. Let me put that kind of in here. Or in this case, excuse me, 81%. All right. So if the middle is 81%, what they want to know is what's Z alpha over 2. Now, Z alpha over 2 would be this guy right over here, the one on the right. Remember that in Chapter 7, you learned that this notation means that the alpha over 2 business is on the right. So let me bring up Excel here. Oops. I have some old ones open that I don't really need. Hey, come here. There we go. Fresh. Yep. Okay, so if your confidence level is 81, 0 0.81, okay, then what's alpha? Alpha, remember, is the complement of your confidence level. So it's 1 minus 81%. That's the area in both tails. So alpha over 2 is equal to that value divided by 2. Are we good? Oops, that's probably pretty small, so you can't see it. There you go. So again, that's your confidence level. That's the center, right? And then alpha is the area in the two tails. So these two tails together make 19%. Then you cut it in half and get 0 0.095. Now, in this case, we want a critical Z value. So Z alpha over 2. And we're going to do this using, um, there's actually several ways you can do it. Norm dot inverse, norm dot s inverse, both of those would work. Norm inverse would work. Norm s inverse would work. The dot ones are the new version, Excel 2010. Um, the non dot ones are the old ones. The s just means standard, which this is because it's a z score. Um, but if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can just get used to typing. Um, the probability is 0 0.095 comma 0 comma 1. That's the standard curve. That would be the negative one, right? Because remember that norm inverse takes the area in the left tail automatically. So if you want the area in the right tail, what you can do is you can add in here a 1 minus alpha over 2. There's so many ways to do this. It's ridiculous. 1 minus alpha over 2 would be 1 minus that value. And then you can make it so that it uses that cell before, like that. Or if you have old school Excel, you could do, or excuse me, still new Excel, you could do norm.s.inv and then just use that 0.905. That'll do it. Or if you have old school Excel, you could use norm inv, norm inverse, 0.905, comma, 0, comma, 1. Ta-da! Or norm S inverse, because it's already the standard curve. That's what the S stands for. So that zero one thing is set. So it's that. Now again, all of these, I keep using this guy right here, which is um, the area in the left tail. Or how is this right Area to the left of Z alpha over two. Okay, this is the area to the left of negative z alpha over 2. Let's see if that makes sense to you. So this little white piece over here, that's 0 0.095. So this little white piece and the peachy colored piece together make 0 0.905, right? So if I want this guy on the right, I need all of that shaded area plus that little white tail, right? And that's why I keep using 0 0.905 to find all these values. I mean, the other way you can go is use the 0 0.095, but just make it the opposite, right? You could say equals negative norm dot inverse, oopsie, of 0 0.095 like that. Oops. Oh, I forgot the 0, 1. I thought I did norm mass inverse. There you go. So that's another way to do it. And there's more. I mean, there's just tons of ways to do this. All right. So I hope that helps you guys figure out how to do your problem. See you. Bye.